Hello guys, in this After Effects tutorials, I want to show you how you can create Electric Spark logo animation like this one. For this animation, we're going to use native After Effects plugins. So stick around, let's get started. So a little confession right now. So when I was about starting this After Effects animation, I actually don't know how electric sparks look like. <laughs> don't get me wrong. I've seen a lot of electric sparks in my life, but I don't know how they should look like when animating actually. So I head on to Google, search for electric spark, switch this search to images and then boom. I saw a lot and I'm gonna try to replicate this one. So back in Adobe After Effects, let's start by creating a new composition. So I'm gonna name this composition Electric Spark Logo. You can feel free to name whatever you wanna name yours. So I'm gonna go with 1920 by 1080 resolution 30 frames per second and the entire animation to be 10 seconds, although we're gonna need less than that duration. So, so hit OK. Control N to create a new composition again, and I'm gonna name this Spark. And this is where it's gonna hold our Sparks, then you hit OK. Wait for it. So I'm gonna go right here, pick the Pen tool, make sure you set the fill right here to None, and then set a fill color if you want to. Then I'm gonna set this uh, stroke thickness to eight. So I'm gonna go to my screen right here, start a new point, by the left of the screen, then move to the right side by holding down the shift to keep it straight and then create another point. So I'm going to hit V on my keyboard, then hold down control key and double click this anchor point tool right here. That is going to move the anchor point right to the center. So I'm going to hit V again to deactivate the anchor point tool. Then I'm going to align these to center. Beautiful. Then hit UU to reveal the property on the timeline. Then add a trim path. So move your time indicator to about eight frames forward in time. Then I'm going to expand the trim path option right here and set the keyframe for end. Then I'm going to go back to zero, change the value of the keyframe to zero. So I'm going to go right here close to one second then set a keyframe for the start then i'm going to also move forward a little then set the keyframe right here value the value of the keyframe to 100. now we're going to expand and zoom into the timeline so that we can see our keyframe so we're going to make sure we move our time indicator to this place then hit end to set the preview so we're going to preview this you see beautiful so this is not actually looking like our spark yet <laughs> so let's turn it into an electric spark with the layer selected we're going to search for the effect turbulence displays and add it to this stroke layer so we're going to go right here and play around with the amount and size so you're going to play around with this nothing is written on stone so I'm going to go with this. It's looking a little bit like the image we just got on Google. So I'm going to go to the evolution right here. Hold down the Alt key or Option key if you're using Mac. Click and then enter the expression time. Asterix 1500. So if you preview now, that is going to cause our line to spark. Damn! We are almost there. So let's add more effect to make this look like the spark we got on Google. Nice. So we're going to search for glow and then we're going to add this onto this effect. So we're going to duplicate this about two more times. So we're going to go into the settings and randomize some of the settings. All feel free to adjust and experiment to whatever you like. So with the glow added, this is what we currently have. So select the shape layer, Ctrl D on your keyboard to duplicate it. We're going to make alter these changes. Then once you duplicate that, go to the stroke and change the size to four. And then we're going to also adjust the glow to be tinier. 
So we're going to duplicate the bottom one again. Control G on your keyboard to duplicate it. Then we're going to select the bottom one then and expand the top blend displays right here. We're going to go to the complexity and set it all the way high to 10. So that's going to create some little two sparks around this. Now the spark is ready. This is what I'm going to use as the spark. So I'm going to go to the main composition. Then I'll right click to create a new solid layer. So I'm going to hit this to BG, meaning renaming this to BG, then make comp size and then hit OK. I will control D on the keyboard to duplicate that. Then I'm going to add the fill effect. So what I'm going to do is to change the color to somewhat neon. Then I'll pull back, then select the rectangle tool, this one, and then mask it like this. So I'm going to go into this hit F on the keyboard to reveal the feather. So I'm going to crank the feather all the way up. Then let's fit this back to preview window. So now I'm going to hit T on the keyboard to set the opacity. I'm going to bring it down to 50. So now let's add our spark. Then let's drag our spark onto the timeline. We have our spark now. So I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard to, uh, to activate the anchor tool. Then I'm going to move it to the side right here. So now what I'm going to do is to duplicate this, shrink it some couple of more times to create random spark around the timeline. It is not written on stone. Be creative. If you preview now, this is our spark. Beautiful. So navigate to where you have your logo, drag and drop it into the project manager window. We're going to set this to footage. Make sure you do too, then hit OK. Drag and drop it into the timeline. So we can hit S to scale this down a bit. I want something within this range. Beautiful. So I'm going to hold this, right click, then go to pre-compose. You can also control shift C to pop up this window. So I'm going to name this to logo holder. Move all attributes to the new composition, then you hit OK. So that is going to create this. So right now I'm going to add the effect called Vegas. Expand the image contours and set the channel to alpha. Change the segments to two. The blend mode to transparent. Now we're going to go to the width and crank that to 4.4. Let's pull in a bit to see what we are doing. So we're going to come right here where this parks begin. Right here, about this point right here, and set a keyframe for the length. Then move back some frame backward and set the length to zero. Hit you to reveal the keyframes. I'm going to create another keyframe at this point. Then I'll move forward a bit. To this point then copy this last keyframe the first keyframe and paste it there so i'm gonna go to the first keyframe here and set a keyframe for the rotation then i'll change the rotation to 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 two go back to right here and make rotation zero so that is gonna spin this effect Let's move our timeline to where we can visibly see everything. Let's add one more effect, the roughing edges effect. Set this to 0 0.5. That is going to cause this to, to spark as if it's, you see that? I'm going to go into the spark composition. Then I'm going to select one of these. I'll copy the glue, then go back to the main composition and paste it on this. I will play the logo holder composition, reduce the glue. So I'll go into the Vegas, I'll make the width 2. 
I will select the bottom logo holder composition again, control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. That's going to make a duplicate. So I will select the last bottom one right here. Then I will go into the spark composition, then select the last shape layer here. I want to copy the turbulent displays, control C. Then I'll go back to the animation tab, then and paste that turbulence displays on this layer. So that is going to create a spark for the logo. If you preview now, this is what you're going to have. I'm going to go right here about this point where everything disappears. Then I will select the three logo holder composition, Control Shift D on your keyboard to split it. Then move it up, shift it a little bit like this, then stretch it. I want it to come up again. Beautiful. So I'm going to go into this and duplicate one of the spark layer here, which is this. Control D on the keyboard to duplicate it. So I'm going to offset that to happen exactly when the second spark is coming up. Yes, there you have it. So I'm going to go here. Select the top logo holder composition, Ctrl D on the keyboard to duplicate it. Then I'm going to remove all of the effects except the glow. I will offset it a bit forward in time. Yeah, boy. The logo should reveal at this point. What I'm going to do now is to animate the glow. I keyframed the glow intensity to zero, then so that at some point that can show. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to parent this. I already have a null object here. I'll select all the layers below it. Then I'll make it a child of the null object. So because I'm going to use this null object to create a wiggle, that is a shake on the screen. But before that, I'm going to go here, right click on the timeline, go to new and create a new adjustment layer. So I'm going to rename this to transform. Then we're going to go in and search for the effect called transform. So what I'm going to do is to keyframe the scale randomly the way I like it. Just be creative right here. There's no particular way of doing this. I just want to make sure I keyframe it to be large from the beginning and then going back to its normal size. So if you preview now, this is what you have. I just keyframe this within one second to 140 and then from 140 to zero between uh, three seconds to six seconds. So I added the wiggle expression and keyframe it. If you look at my timeline, you'll see these keyframes. I increase the intensity, then slowly, gradually remove the intensity. If you also look at the preview, you can see when it stop vibrating. So you see on my effect and control panel, that is the slider control. So like I said, you can check the video to know how to do this. So this is how to create electric logo spark animation using only native plugin inside Adobe After Effect. If you learned something new on this video, please hit the like button. That will enable the algorithm to suggest this to more people. If you have any question, please feel free to ask me in the comment section and I'll reply to all questions as quick as I can. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. So in whatever way you are able to support me, I highly appreciate you. So until I see you again on the next one, my name is SSB Otaru from Motion Digit Studios.